I have seen that uh, many of you are still using the phone, talking, sharing, making friendship. Please, once again, I beg you, don't do that. This is a holy compound. We are struggling to make it a place of God. Please obey. Even if you don't understand, you have come here for a purpose, taking such a heavy risk, journeying too long. No human can help us. So I don't understand why you don't keep silence, you just make friendship, just sit there when sacrament is exposed. Please cooperate with us. Please don't use, there is no use. I, people have told me, Father, after the retreat, Somebody is calling me. I said, but I told you, don't give your phone number. We are, we are all struggling. We are not holy people. We are our own weaknesses. But you, we have come to a church for a great purpose. Jesus is here to do great things in your life. Please, let us don't have human help. There is no use in making friendship. Jesus himself one day told me, Somebody told me, Father, you just, uh, I have a problem with my passport. Immediately I remembered a lady who attended the retreat and she's working with the passport office. So I thought immediately, oh, you have a passport problem. Let me just uh, check. Then the Holy Spirit told me like this. Are you here to recommend a passport officer or recommend me? I said the danger that is coming to me, a danger that coming to me. Am I here to solve people's problem with the human people? No, that's idol worship. Let Jesus, let God be God in your life. Let God alone be God. We don't want human help. It can lead us to oppression. It can lead us to another sin. This is God's place. Let him intervene. He brought you here. For you, majority of you, it's a miracle you came here. Take maximum effort by silence. Nothing will happen if we keep silence. The world will not break down. Please close your eyes. You are permitted to open it when you put food inside. Swallow it. Maybe you don't understand, but obedience has great power. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we continue to sing nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let no one misguide us. I, I was in Kenya for many years. Eight years I was in Kenya. Towards the end I was very shocked. You know what? I have come to know the same same people who sits in the front row in the church are the same people go for witchcraft. I was very shocked. I could never believe that the same people go to church, go to witchcraft. My idea was the pagans go for witchcraft. <coughs> but Kenya corrected me. Not pagans, Christians go to witchcraft. <coughs> Later I came to know not only Kenyans, all over the Christians also practice witchcraft. Then I was praying. Then only I got a new revelation about it. Many Christians, many people think if they go to which for many people, spirituality and church is like a mask, like a mask they put that I'm a good person, I'm a prayerful person, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer. Look at me, I go to the church and they go for witchcraft in the night when nobody notices. They know it is wrong. They know it is wrong. Witchcraft is all about to destroy others. And now, I, what I have learned, uh, many people think if they go to church, they get spiritual things. They get a social acceptance. They get some spiritual fervors. But many think in order to get material things, they must go to witchcraft. It's only through witchcraft somebody can become rich. That is what many Christians believe. That is why they go to church for spiritual things. And they go for witchcraft for material things. The word of God never approves a court case. The word of God. Then somebody came and asked, 
father it was a lawyer so you are saying you should never go to court what about us lawyers you are making us jobless so we told her don't worry we need to when we ask to read the word we need to deep read it deeper saint paul is telling the people you say you are a believer you say jesus is your god then are you expecting justice from human people or from god court and law and lawyers they are for pagans not for christians for us our law is the bible praise the lord the pagans as long as there are pagans in this world lawyers have job the believers are not supposed to go for court that's why david he prayed psalm 121 192 i raise my eyes to the heavens from where my help come my help comes from the lord who made heaven and earth praise the lord i raise my eyes to the heavens my help comes from you know they say david was a king he had many lawyers many judges many people to help and david said my help come from god a king is praying like that then what about us praise the lord hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah so we told this man you withdraw the case and pray to the lord he said how he lost all the money and he filed a case against his boss whom he accused of terminating him unjustly so when he got a lawyer he gave him money when the judgment came the lawyer supported the boss because he took money from him and he lost that case so he has to take a loan to hire another lawyer and that's the way as the scripture says you will not come out until you have paid the very last penny praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. praise the lord hallelujah so let no one no one misguide you mark 1224 mark 1224 the word of god we read that why you have gone wrong it's because you neither know the scripture nor know the word of god we don't know the word of god we don't know that god does not approve court case that's why the scripture says this is 1 corinthians chapter 6 verse 12 everything is lawful but everything will not build me up hallelujah just because it is lawful it's lawful to go to the court it's lawful to file the case but it will not build us up praise the lord hallelujah we are you can see we are building this retreat center here this hall that you can see is to hold 3000 people inside we have a basement for our children's program and this is a residential block you can see here uh, but these works are all were stopped because of a crisis we had because those whom we have given the contract had put us into a very big problem they compromised on the strength of the building but then they filed a case against me i who preach that we should never go to court then we have to pay them a lot of money to leave this compound i preferred to give the money than to go to the court because the scripture says what happened the lord blessed us so now we continue our project if you give if we if we give a case here you can't do anything until another 5 to 10 years nothing will happen you will just lose money you will lose peace you will not reach anywhere devil is a, a big deceiver he will crush you beyond measure he will test you many advise to me go to the court because you have all the evidences but god says don't go come to me money is in the pocket of jesus praise the lord he is a mighty provider he is the provider of everything our problem we are short sighted we are just looking this small earth we are something beyond that's why the devil he is always trying to trap us why we are trapped 
the reason is very simple we are totally ignorant of the scripture if jesus said he said this is luke 12 58 59 jesus opened his mouth used his tongue and he said before you go to the court settle it jesus said jesus said this is a direct word from jesus praise the lord so if you have any court case withdraw it immediately if somebody has filed a case against you pray that they may withdraw it praise the lord god is a mighty savior i met a woman she is an old woman in kenya when i went there for a bible convention she is a widow she lost her husband she is a widow she told me she were building a big flat so she entrusted this work to somebody who is like a friend a distant her husband's distant friend husband's friend is a builder is a contractor so she took a loan to build the flat later on after completing she can pay off the loan that was her idea this man was taking all the money not building it because she is taking loan she is a widow then whenever this woman somebody went and checked it is not working this man is telling this woman you are old you go and die let me take this house like that this man started to harass her with a lot of good words that he took the contract after that he changed his he saying you are old why you need this flat i need this you go and die you don't know when you will die like that this man was threatening her she said i don't know what to do she had attended the retreat she knows she cannot go to court she has no husband to fight she has nobody to help she said she just prayed to god she just prayed continuously for god's mercy this is a word this is judith chapter 9 11 and 12 this is what she claimed judith chapter 9 11 and 12 judith chapter 9 11 and 12 the word of god says you can repeat after me for your strength, for your strength. does not depend on numbers know your, your might on the powerful, on the powerful. But, you the but you are the god of the lowly helper of the oppressed, helper of the oppressed. upholder of the weak, of the weak. Protector, of the protector of the forsaken savior of those without hope, of those without hope. please please God of, my God of my father God of the heritage of Israel, of heritage of Israel. Lord, of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth creator of the waters, of the waters. King, of all your creation. King of all your creation hear my prayer, hear my prayer. this is a prayer of Judith you know Judith she uh, she is also like an orphan she's praying and she prayed and then uh, she continued to pray and she terminated the contract with this man because he was cheating then he filed a case against her now she has no way to file the because she's been asked all this she just prayed continuously this prayer then she heard all of a sudden with a heart attack this man died so she went and she told the court that then the court said once somebody died there is no case so she is released from the case and she put somebody she completed the work of the flat she told me being a widow i don't know what to do god is fighting for me god fought for me jeremiah chapter 20 verse 11 jeremiah chapter 20 verse 11 in Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 11 we read repeat after me the Lord is with me like a dread warrior therefore my persecutors will stumble 
and they will not prevail the dread warrior means one who has put all the armors standing and will fight you cannot fight for yourself god will fight when you follow god's word praise the lord you will be oppressed you will be persecuted but if you know the lord has told you to go through this suffering just accept it the lord who wants you to be humbled will exalt you as he himself said if you humble yourself god will exalt you praise the lord hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah i met a woman this was in nairobi while praying while praying she started to scream and manifest scream loud and while screaming she is just repeating in her language you know there are different languages for different tribes she was screaming don't kill me don't kill me this is what she is telling in her language somebody who speaks that language interpreted this is what she is shouting so we and she is closing her eyes tight she is screaming don't kill me don't kill me in her language so we brought some holy water we sprinkled over her and we told her to open the eyes repeatedly we said praying 1 john 3:8 1 john 3:8 says the son of man has revealed for this purpose to destroy the works of the devil praise the lord the son of man has revealed for this purpose to destroy the works of the devil so we were repeating that because it's the work of the evil one because devil is a murderer satan comes john chapter 10 verse 10 says the devil the thief comes to steal destroy and kill so anyone anything that related to murder killing is rooted in the devil so we told her to wake up after these prayers she opened her eyes while opening her eyes we asked who is trying to kill you we are not here to kill you we are here to pray for you then she said small babies are choking my neck to kill me small babies he said how can small babies kill you they are very weak their hands are not strong no there are many coming to choke me then we prayed this is proverbs chapter 24 verses 11 proverbs 24 from 11 proverbs 24 from 11 those if you hold back from rescuing those taken away to death those who go staggering to the slaughter if you say look we did not know this does not he who weighs the heart perceive it does not he who keeps watch over your soul know it and will he not repay all according to their deeds if you say if you do not protect those who are taken away to death what does it mean so we asked her what is your profession what do you do she said i am a nurse by profession then we said did you ever involve in abortion you know she is never married she has no husband she has no child she is also a little old and now she said she as a nurse she has also a she is working in a hospital she also has a private clinic she said she is an expert in abortion and she does many abortions and help and she said she gets a lot of money and she said she wanted to help others now you imagine that she said father me for me it's a job i never thought let no one misguide us she said i'm a nurse and i help so i have many techniques see let no one misguide us abortion is murder abortion is murder you shall not kill the commandment says we have no right at all at all to kill anyone when father jos came from nairobi to conduct the last month retreat here he showed a video about the aborted souls aborted babies how abortion takes place why it is murder 
it is like it's like miracle of life it's a video called miracle of life he has displayed that video actually i have it but uh, i did not think god wants me to speak about it but it's very terrible somebody saw this and they said they cannot sleep that night let no one misguide us i was in uk preaching against abortion uh, our center is in london this is in ramsgate is in the, in the london side there's people came from far so after the retreat after two weeks somebody came from birmingham this is another city she came back and she said after the retreat she had a disturbing dream the dream is she is taking a very big stone and take keeping it on a small baby she is taking a big stone and keeping this stone on a small baby then she, you know certain god speaks through dreams do you know that yes. job 33 13 and 14 in a dream in the vision of of the night when sleep falls on mortals god speaks to them job chapter 33 verses 13 and 14 job 33 13 and 14 that god speaks through dreams praise the lord hallelujah, hallelujah. so she got this dream and she was very disturbed you know certain dreams it cannot just go from us it will just come you know and i have found here in rwanda god speaks to rwandans 98 percentage through dreams but the problem nobody has interpretation so they just uh, this dream comes and they just think and it just goes away god speaks through dreams and he also gives interpretation of dreams there are two different gifts gift of dreams it has no meaning at all another gift is called gift of interpretation of dreams that also has no meaning if you don't have dream no point of interpretation no point of interpretation if you don't have dreams and saint catherine of siena said god has scattered his gifts to different people so that we may not live like islands we may be connected to one another we may respect one another we may be united to one another in the spirit praise the lord so this dream she came back to ask what does this dream mean so we asked her many questions about her confession eucharist and she's a very good woman very prayerful she prayed and she got married and she's a very 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 good woman and that's why she took this dream very serious and we asked her did you kill anyone she said she has never never killed so we asked did you ever uh, commit abortion she said she has never committed abortion we asked do you have children she is just married for four years she is uh, has no child and she said she has not prepared and uh, she is not praying for a child she has never killed any child but the dream says she is tried to kill someone we prayed half an hour we prayed as we were praying and praying she said she said father i remember one thing maybe there is something and she said i use actually after the marriage we both plant and i use a contraceptive chip i planted it so that i don't get pregnant i don't conceive i don't know about any of these things she said you know it is it's it's planted so she cannot conceive the lord told her is equal to killing a child the church the church does not approve artificial family planning the church speaks about natural family planning it's as if she has kept a stone so that a child will not be born wow to those who call evil good and good evil a layman told me like this if you look at a mirror this mirror will show left side as your right right side as your left if you look at this world the world will always tell you wrong as right right as wrong and we need to look at the word of god to know exactly what is right and what is wrong praise the lord 
a lady came and she said like this father i don't understand the problems in my family there is lot of confusion there is no love between my children there is no financial prosperity there is something that is very wrong in our family marriage is not taking place having children without getting married even if somebody is married it just breaks down and even if i do a lot for my children they are very ungrateful i don't know i i have all kinds of burdens in my life but i don't understand what is going on what is happening in my family there is no unity there is a lot of uh, impurity confusion ingratitude and she said but she's very prayerful going to church praying go, asking god for, for god's intervention so she asked how how can you just tell what is wrong while praying for her actually this is the first time i got this word of god means i found it in after coming to rwanda actually i got many new revelations because the word of god has a new and a special meaning in its context in its context some of these scriptures we have to know this is full of holy spirit even today when i listen to another priest preaching it's something very new for me i have not heard that interpretation because it's very very deep we cannot just comprehend god and his word it is very deep is very high praise the lord the same word that you listen today will be so different when you listen it tomorrow when you listen to a word is an answer to everything one day in between let me say one day a sister came here for counseling so i kept her in the parlor i was just going for something then actually i forgot i kept her in the parlor for counseling because of many things i completely forgot is after 3 4 hours after going to nyamata I came back i came to know my god now i kept somebody in the parlor i did not do the counseling and she came from very far and she had to go back so when i came i told her i'm very sorry forgive me because i forgot so let us just speak so we started praying so i prayed the name of the father son and the holy spirit lord jesus you said where two or three are gathered in your name you will be there in their midst we believe you are here because we have gathered in your name please speak to us as we prayed we opened the bible the lord gave psalm 56:8 psalm 56:8 the word of god says i have kept count of your tossings and i have collected your tears in my bottle i have collected your tears in my bottle so i spoke this word you know this is what god said this sister told me father this is enough for me i said why it's enough she said father this is god spoke to me it's enough for me i have lot of problem my own people just chased me away from my job what i was doing is for god it was, she was in a school there was some misunderstanding she said father my god knows how i worked hard he has collected my tears is enough for me then i said but you have nothing to speak she said no god spoke to me i then only i understood even if i spoke to her for hours there was no solution when god spoke to her because we did not share anything and i just go go to this word of god and said she said father i don't live for any human I'm a nun. I live for my God, and my God knows me. And He said this because you had, if you had asked me and you gave me this word as an answer, then I understand. Maybe with your power, you gave me that with your knowledge. But now, without me telling, God spoke. He knows my burdens. That was the shortest counseling I have ever done, <laughs> because God spoke. That's the power of the word of god it has everything that we seek praise the lord hallelujah so this lady said there is a lot of confusion in the family while praying god gave this word of god from wisdom chapter 14 verses from 22 
wisdom 14 from 22 the scripture says then it was not enough for them to err about the knowledge of God but though living in great strife due to ignorance they call such great evils peace for whether they kill children in the initiations celebrate secret mysteries or hold frenzied revels with strange customs they no longer keep either their lives or their marriages pure wisdom 14 22 up to 28 but they either treacherously kill one another or grieve one another by adultery and all is a raging riot of blood and murder theft and deceit corruption faithlessness tumult perjury confusion over what is good forgetfulness of perverse defiling of souls sexual perversion disorder in marriages adultery and debauchery for the worship of idols not to be named is the beginning and cause and end of every evil for their worshippers either rave in exaltation or prophesy lies or live unrighteously or readily commit perjury witchcraft is the beginning and cause and end of every evil repeat after me confusion over what is good forgetfulness of hours what does means forgetfulness of hours that means you do something good they don't remember you have done something good they will treat you as if your enemy you may have given money you have paid school fees you have paid house rent you have supported you gave somebody to start a business but they will treat you as if you have never done something good they will cause us it witchcraft cause ingratitude in people then repeat after me defiling of souls sexual perversion disorder in marriage adultery debauchery murder theft deceit faithlessness for the worship of idols not to be named is the beginning cause and end of every world we told asked this woman about witchcraft she said her grandfather had a shrine of witchcraft let no one misguide us what is witchcraft inviting devil what is witchcraft taking a a knife and stabbing Jesus from behind what is witchcraft denying what Jesus has done for us is a sin against the first commandment that is why many people they have mysterious problems what this lady was telling is exactly in the Bible the Lord revealed this word also for Rwanda if you look at what happened in Rwanda people have many explanations being a missionary being a priest witchcraft a human can never kill a human devil is the murderer how he kills if we invite him witchcraft is inviting devil inviting devil is what everything is written this is exactly what happened this is exactly happens anywhere where there is any of these things it's not only for here Bible word of God is universally applied I met a person in Kisumu in Kenya Kisumu he was a chairman we went there for a retreat while sharing he was telling me father he had an experience he was a builder a contractor but one of his building collapsed and he became bankrupt he's he's a chairman but he's financially completely broke and he said in that time um, uh, one of his parishioners who is also very poor he came and advised him sir I have a 
powerful witch doctor i will take you and you will become very rich all your debts will be paid you come i will take you so this chairman is a chairman is very active in the church he said i was so confused this man is telling me like this now nobody can solve this so if there is a powerful witch doctor how, what do i do he said he just prayed asking god then the lord gave him an inspiration and he asked his friend of the parish he asked him my friend i know you for many years you don't have even a house of your own you are just staying in a rented house why can't you go and become rich by yourself fast then you come and advise me devil is a deceiver is a liar he wanted to steal your soul and this witchcraft is a very big problem very big problem while i was in uganda in enderbe in front of our church there is a number and all those things the it's called this uh, witch dog you know they they say, say it uh, doctor this is a uh, uh, is the name of the special doctor for so many things they have written for money for wife for the so many things and his number and so on i i was think so many in the all the post this notices are there so i asked somebody what is this advertisement they said this is witchcraft <laughs> in front of the church you know we have the church or the post they are saying all this my dear sisters and brothers ugandans are the brothers of kenyans only and rwandans are also we are not different praise the lord devil is a deceiver it is actually is a terrible sin for the julius was explaining to us that what these witch doctors do i have many experiences no witch doctor will treat you free and they will make sure your problems are not solved why they get more money they ask you for chicken they ask you for goat they ask you for many things and keep your hands open lord jesus lord jesus i need your mercy i need your mercy forgive me forgive me father forgive me jesus forgive me spirit the lord just wanted to tell that the whole world can complain but you can't he has already proved his goodness in your life you are not supposed to be sitting here you are supposed to be under the earth he brought you back to life to declare his glory and he promised you will live for god do that praise the lord hallelujah he is the same yesterday today and forever if he has proved once he is interested in you he is the same forever he will never go back from his love praise the lord hallelujah we humans have a weakness the more we are familiar with a person the more we hate that person that's why the husbands and wife have big problem familiarity breeds contempt god is just the opposite the more he knows the more he knows our weakness the more he pours out his mercy and love that is why there is none like him he is never tired of us he always loves us praise the lord hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah so there are many things we think it's fine but it's not fine at all we had a retreat in uh, nyamirambo parish in kigali during the retreat as usual we repeated word of god malachi chapter 2 verse 16 malachi 2:16 says i hate divorce says the lord i hate divorce says the lord you 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 will repeat malachi malachi chapter 2 verse 16 you, you will repeat i hate divorce i will say thus says the lord thus says the lord i hate divorce 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 
Thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord. We are preaching this in Yamirambo. In between, a man came. He heard only this. I hate divorce. I hate divorce. Afterwards, this man came here in Chevru Kansense. Then, Indian priests were shouting, I hate divorce. I hate divorce. Because there are no Indian priests in this country except us. There are no Indian priests in this country. So, I said, I am not the one. Then he said, no, you are the one I saw from far. You are the one because I don't know any other person. Then I said, maybe it is true, but what I said is not me. Then he said, who said? I said, I am just a mouthpiece. I was just shouting the word of God, not my word. Then he told me, show me from where. So I opened my Bible and I showed him Malachi chapter 2.16 that says, I hate divorce, says the Lord. This man had brought his Bible in the bag. He took his Kenya Rwanda Bible. He opened, he checked, and he found the same word of God. I hate divorce, says the Lord. You know, sometimes the translations can be different. It can be written, I don't appreciate, I don't like, I don't want. But the same thing is written in Kenya Rwanda. I hate divorce. This man, gentleman told me, Father, I am shocked. I never knew God hated divorce. I had planned to get a divorce. Now, I wanted to withdraw. And this man went, he withdrew the case, and he brought the wife here for prayers. He said, Father, how can I say I'm a Christian, I love God, and I do something that God hates? And he withdrew the case, and he brought the wife, attended retreat, his life was changed. Devil is a liar, is a deceiver. God can never lie. If God said, I hate divorce, Matthew 19, 6, we read, So what God united, let no one separate. Let no one. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I had a retreat in uh, uh, Matthew 19, 6. I had a retreat in, in Australia and I put myself into trouble. I was preaching this, I hate divorce. After this, one woman came and she told me, Father, you are talking against to me. I said, why? You were looking at me and you are shouting seven times, I hate divorce. And you know very well, I am divorced. I said, me, I don't know. This is the first time I come here. She said, no, Father, the people know. And now you are just telling against to me. I said, forgive me. I'm really sorry. She said, no, you cannot just say that God hate divorce looking at my face. You know how I am embarrassed. I said, no, I'm very sorry. And uh, I told her, at 17.30, at 17.30 we read, God does not look at the period of ignorance. Sometimes you may be divorced out of ignorance. You did not know God is not going to judge you. He's a merciful God. And even me, I'm sorry, I'm, I did not know, I'm not here to accuse you. <coughs> then she said, Father, you have to know it's the Old Testament. And when you say that, you know how much you are hurting me. I said, I'm very sorry. <coughs> then she told me that you cannot say like this. Then I just told myself, my God, what do I do? See, now the problem is, if you don't speak the word, I told her, I'm not preaching about you. I'm preaching about those who, young girls, those are newly married, those are thinking of separation. If we don't do that, Ezekiel 44, 23, we read, a priest must show the difference between what is holy and what is unholy, what is clean and what is unclean. This is our duty, Ezekiel 44, 23, Ezekiel 44, 23. So this is, many people are ignorant. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I asked her, do you want me to speak? It is good to have a divorce. She said, no, I don't say like that, but you don't accuse. I said, I'm very sorry. Me as a priest, I'm a soldier. I can only say what the scripture says. Everything I say, put in the waste box. But what the Bible says is for you. For all of us, for our children, for the future, many are ignorant. 
many are ignorant many and many we cannot even preach now why because they accuse you sisters and brothers sometimes you know if, uh, when we are in a pit we wanted others also fall into the pit never do that and I asked her do you want everyone to get a divorce like you me I cannot do that so I told her one solution never invite me again if you invite me I have no other option because me I'm a if I say I'm a priest I'm not here to preach my ideas I'm here just to copy what my master my commander told me to do that if I don't do that I'm not doing justice to my call and if I say anything extra other than the Bible reject it it's only the scripture it's only the word that can give us the way this is the truth my word John 17 17 my word is the truth hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 let us ask the Lord to reveal to us every sin there are many times we even advised we supported people to do something that God hates God does not approve I also remember a person who lost his job and uh, he was trying all his means to get his job then while praying for him we got this word of God from Proverbs chapter 19 verse 26 Proverbs 19 26 the scripture says Proverbs 19 26 those who do violence to their father and chase away their mother are children who cause shame and bring reproach his problem is joblessness and the, and the Lord said those who do violence to their father and chase away their mother are children who cause reproach we asked him do you did you mistreat your father he said he lost his father when he was two years he has never done any harm to his father we asked did you do any harm to your mother he said it's not me it's my wife because I was far so my wife and my mother they were like North Pole and South Pole they were never connecting so I told my mom my wife to do what he wanted so she put my mother in an outhouse refused to give her food medicine my mother suffered a lot but I was helpless the Lord said like this your mother became a widow when you are two years she brought you up she educated you she made you to get a job he she helped you to get a wife and she's a widow God gave you a job also to provide for your mother who is also a widow when you refuse to help her with food medicine and shelter your job has no meaning before God so you lost it when you because you refuse to show mercy to your mother Sirach 7 27 28 Sirach 7 27 28 we read honor your father with all your heart do not forget the birth pangs of your mother remember it's because of them you were born how can you repay what they have given to you how can you repay do not forget the birth pangs of your mother Sirach chapter 7 verses 27 and 28 praise the Lord I asked my mother one day a question how long a foolish question how long I was there in her womb she told me nine months and ten days and I know one thing I can never carry my mother in my womb but my God wanted that I carry my mother in my heart I respect and honor her because I can never repay my mother many people have block hidden blocks maybe you have threatened you have abused you have filed a case you have abused or accused your father your mother Jesus does never approve it I know many are childless many marriages are not taking place because they have threatened they have abused they have done something wrong to their parents Genesis 49 26 therefore we read Genesis 49 26 the blessings of your father is greater than the blessings of the forefathers the eternal mountains the forefathers are Abraham Isaac and Jacob this is word of God but the blessings of your father your biological father 
is greater than the blessings of your forefathers. Imagine if Abraham, Isaac and Jacob is coming through the main door here. And your parents who did not look after you, your father was a drunkard, they are coming, they are very old through this sacristy door in front of you. Before whom you have to bow first, before the holy forefathers or before your parents? Before your parents teach us the scripture. Even if they are wrong, you cannot go wrong. Sirach 3, 12, we read, even if his mind fails, don't hurt him. It's written about your father. Take care of your father and your mother in their old age and your sins will be forgiven because of the kindness towards your parents, says the scripture. Sirach 3, 12 to, uh, 9 to 12. Sirach uh, 4, 3, 12 to 16. Before my ordination, I called my father and my mother. I knelt in front of them. I touched their feet and I told them, forgive me. You know, my mother used to beat me minimum three times a day <laughs> because I was very naughty, disobedient. Today only I know it was wrong. Then, but before that, I just asked them to forgive me because I know as a child, I hurt them more than they have ever hurt me. So I ask them to forgive me, bless me. So my parents, if they, I touched their feet. Immediately they lifted me. They put their hands on my head. They blessed me. They forgive me. They, they don't want me to touch their feet. They blessed me. Today when I look back, that is the best thing ever happened in my life, that I could touch the feet of my parents and my parents could bless me. The blessings of the parents have profound power in your life. Maybe if you have never taken that blessing, you need that. Ephesians 6, 1 to 3 we read, so that you may, it may be well with you. You may have a long life on earth. It's a promise. It's a word of God with a promise. Ephesians 6, 1 to 3. Let us kneel down. We are in the presence of the Lord. We are preparing for a good confession. Let us ask the Lord to reveal to us hidden sins. Certain things we have taken for granted. We thought it's okay. It's fine. Keep your hands open. Forgive me, Father. Once again we plead. Forgive me, Jesus. Forgive me, Holy Spirit. Forgive me. can help me. You are the only one who gets never tired of me. People are tired of me. Many don't want to speak to me. Many avoid me. They just tell me that I'm telling the same thing again and again. They don't want to listen to my pain. Oh Lord, you are the only one who loves me the way I am without judging me. Thank you Lord for holding on to me. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me. Thank you, Lord, for tolerating me. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. I want your 
mercy i want your compassion i surrender everything unto you i surrender myself to you i surrender all to you everything i give you withholding nothing my lord jesus i surrender myself to you with all my pains with all my sins with all my weaknesses with all my wickedness i want to surrender myself to you